Yeah, all right, everybody, and welcome to a very special first look at Zombie Survival Game Online, otherwise known as ZSGO. Today, we have hit a very important milestone on the channel and got our first bit of sponsored content. That said, what is ZSGO? Well, as the name suggests, it's a survival game featuring a ton of zombies, a lot of looting, base building, and a whole bunch of trading. If, after the video, you would like to check out more information about the game for yourself, they do have a Discord available that they're asking everybody to join and help in the development of the game. They are looking for feedback, which is always a positive. So, I'll leave a link to their Discord down in the description, as well as a link to the Steam page where you can check it out for yourself. Because rumor has it that there's going to be a free demo coming up very, very soon, so you can try it for yourself. But, with that said, let's get started. And here we are. As soon as you start out, and in the future this may even change, but we find ourselves in a little tent city here behind the walls of the safe zone now you start with basically nothing currently in this build as it is an alpha version all of this could change as well as the menus and everything like that so keep that in mind as we play through but we have a knife we have a flashlight and we have a bandage, some food, some water, which is great. So we're not completely empty. There's plenty of things throughout the town that you can loot. You can go into here, got myself a lock. Once you're done the scrounging through the trash and other items for resources, our first goal is to come and talk with the traders. Now, Immediately upon leaving the tented area, I would strongly suggest coming and speaking with this survivor right here. Now, what you do is you approach the shop and use your scroll wheel down there at the bottom right next to my water. You can see that I am switching the options there. We can switch over to missions and getting started. This survivor here is quite generous, giving us a P1922 magazine, the pistol, and some pistol ammo. Bam! I would strongly suggest everybody go and get this right off the bat. We are also with a little bit of money now, which we can then use to purchase items. Currently, the items are pretty cheap. They're not too bad. There's a bunch of different cosmetic items. There's backpacks that you can get, which will increase your inventory size. There's things like football helmets, which will increase your armor. All kinds of good stuff. Next, if you click the little book icon right here, you'll see that there's plenty of jobs for us to do. Meaning, it's probably best that we go and visit all of the NPCs, see what kind of missions they have, starting with the basics. Complete. There you go. We'll go over to each of the NPCs in turn, gather up all those missions before we head out. Keep in mind that there are things like crafting benches that you can use while you're here at the settlement. You'll even find some wood and stone to help you get started if you need it. Unfortunately, taking a look again at our inventory, we don't have very much space. Therefore, I think it's time to head out into the open world and do some looting. The first object we want to get is definitely going to be a backpack. So let's get searching. Leaving the safe zone finds us with some zombies. If the zombies get too close to the safe zone they will despawn meaning you can't get any loot from them. They are simple enough to fight. Bam. And there you have it. Some rifle rounds. We'll go ahead and grab those. But 
make sure that you're always aiming for the head as that will take them down a bit faster there are vehicles around some of which you can loot other ones that are kind of burnt out like this one you'll have a little bit more of a difficult time looting there are a number of different zombies and zombie models so you don't always feel like you're fighting the same one which is pretty cool And we'll go ahead and take a couple of these out. Hopefully one of them uh, is carrying a backpack for us. Bam. Nada. As you move through the game, be very mindful of the clicking noises that you hear. As there is a radiation mechanic. A lot of barrels like this will definitely have a little bit of radiation associated with it. Right now, that slow click isn't too, too bad. But, we did find our first backpack. And there you have it. We've got our first pistol. Bam. We can go ahead and reload our clips. And if this happens to empty out, you just simply drag over the ammunition and it will fill the clip back up. But, here's a zombie. Boop. <laughs> Very easy. Headshots do count for a lot. These here, more desiccated zombies, are a lot more easy to take out. There are armored zombies within the game that will be a lot more difficult. So there are a number of places that you can loot. Some will have crates filled with foundations. Others will simply have the basics. We're going to have plenty of engagements with these zombies here and, and here you can see one of the armored zombies we're going to have to be a little bit more careful with this one as headshots don't really do much to it huh let's go ahead and remove that one shall we yeah got him as you can see however the game does get very very dark however starting out with a flashlight is great and another good part about this is we can still use our main weapon while holding a flashlight so we don't have to worry about being completely in the dark for too long another interesting thing you're going to want to keep an eye out for is rainstorms now Usually, in games, rainstorms aren't too terrible. In this game, however, they're highly, highly radioactive. So, having a base will definitely make sure that you're not getting radiated nearly as much. One of the first things we're going to need to make in order to start building a base is the building plan. Simply click the button once you have all of the resources. This one takes 10 wood and 10 stone. It will begin crafting that for you. And with that, we can start laying down blueprints. So to begin building your first base, you simply take the building plan, right click on that and say hold. You're now holding your little blueprints holding right click we can see that there's a ton of different items that we can craft from there's wood foundations that we're obviously going to want the items are pretty large again you can build in the safe zone honestly seems a little bit odd um, but it will give you a place out in the wilderness to go ahead and put down sleeping bags and cooking places. That way you have some respawn points. We're going to go ahead out here while we have a bit more room. There you have it. We've got a foundation. You can make yourself some wooden walls. There's also window frames that you can place. There's your stairs so you can have upper floors. There's, of course, window shutters and things like that. There's the triangle floors. There's a lot of options for you to build some pretty interesting stuff. Really, it's up to your imagination. Bam, and there you have it. 
can go ahead and just name it safe for the time being and we have our respawn point so with that the next thing we should probably go over is deaths what happens to all of our wonderful loot when we do eventually die well let's take a look at that now hello zombies oh no i'm out of ammo don't eat me that one lost interest oh we have the option to do a fresh spawn or spawn at our bed bam here we are a little bit later in the day so it looks like we get a bandage a soda and some soup and moving over to where we unfortunately passed away we see our bag so we can go ahead and put on our backpack which gives us back that loot and now with having the opportunity to take a look at how the game starts out let's see how it progresses so as you can see we have some good armor a mega backpack which gives us a ton of room and carrying weight in order to carry around your tools your building supplies quest items building pieces for your base attachments and all this fun stuff so if we take a look here as you can see i do still have my pistol which we seen earlier but bam vector i really do like the gun models in this really really cool <laughs> Unfortunately, you cannot load the weapons unless you have a clip. So, we're going to go ahead and take this one off and put on our shotgun. Look at the size of this thing. Amazing. The reload animations look really good. The sound effects are not bad at all. The armored zombies will still take a number of hits in order to take out, but you are able to take out pretty much any other type of zombie with one shot with exception of maybe the irradiated ones. There you go. Fantastic. With all that out the way though, it's time to move in to the pros and cons. So our first pro is definitely the entities within the game. And these include the zombies. There's plenty of different models for the zombies as you can see there's this one here there's another one here there is of course a ton of business types running around and you had a pretty good look at the armored zombies earlier so there's lots of different models throughout and not only are there a ton of zombie types but there's plenty of different types of weapons, food, water, and tools that you can choose from throughout the game and loot from different buildings, which is awesome. It'll keep you searching for quite a while. Our next pro is definitely the visuals. The game looks really good. The cell shaded voxel style of the game definitely will make the visuals last for quite a while. I definitely do like this art style as a big fan of games like Borderlands and whatnot. So lots of good things to say. I definitely like the way the traders look. Each of them look pretty unique. And this safe zone is by no far the limitation to the number of NPCs that there are. This one's a little creepy. Another pro alongside the visuals is how the game runs. I haven't had any issues keeping it at 60 FPS. You can unlimit the frame rate. And I haven't had any hitching or anything like that, even when there's decent groups of zombies around, which is amazing. Now, I am running a 3070 RTX as well as an i9 and 64 gigs of RAM. So your experience may differ from mine as far as that's considered, but let's move on. 
And now, unfortunately, we come to the cons. So, there are a few bugs in the game. Sometimes when using my pistol, I did have an occasion where it would get down to nine bullets and would refuse to fire any more bullets. The only other glitch I had was for a period of time, zombies stopped spawning on the map, which did give me time to run around and loot stuff, but in a zombie survival game, part of the fun of the game is all the zombies, so that does unfortunately still count as a negative. The other con that we have for you today is the audio. So, it's not so much that there are a lack of settings like in previous videos, because there's plenty of settings here. They've got plenty of video settings, controls, all that fun stuff, so the menu system is great. But, it's the footsteps within the game. So, taking a listen real quick. As I'm moving to the right, you can hear the footstep audio going to the left, same if I were to go right. As I'm walking forward, you can hear the audio directly behind the player. This makes me occasionally want to turn around and see if there's anything following me. Now, I've quickly learned that the other negative to the audio is the zombies, that they don't currently have footsteps. And in a game where there's evil creatures attempting to sneak up on you, being able to hear them footsteps is really important. They do make auditory sounds and vocalizations whenever they aggro you. However, not always. When they sneak up on you, it can be quite surprising. There you go. Even the impact sounds when they're hitting you could be a little bit, not louder, but have a stronger thud to them. Like you're getting hit pretty hard. That's pretty much all of our cons. The game is really good and I've been having a ton of fun with it. Now, we're going to go over some suggestions that I had for the developers and then we'll go into the ratings. So, as you can see, there's some items here on the ground. I dropped these items, this one in particular, the Rebar Club, pretty much when I first started up the game. Items, when dropped, will remain there pretty much indefinitely as long as you have the game file. Logging out and logging back in, the items will still be there. That's in no way a negative, my concern is if, if you were to drop too many things that you might end up with an issue where there starts becoming lag. I haven't experienced any myself, so for the time being, maybe add a little bit of a timer to when items on the ground would disappear. I'm not sure how that would affect the loot pool for buildings and whatnot, but there you have it. My next suggestion for the developers would definitely be increase the amount of time it takes for loot to respawn. So, as I've been recording here, I've been just going around and looting boxes throughout the town, and they just continuously respawn. What this ends up doing, unfortunately, is de-incentivizing people to explore the map. There is a decent sized map and there's a lot of different areas to check out. Overall, the suggestion would definitely be giving players a little bit more control over the settings whenever they start up a game. Uh, coming from games like Seven Days to Die where you can increase the loot pool, the number of spawn locations for loot, the amount of loot in chests would greatly help players enjoy the game in the way that they'd like. The next suggestion that I would have is probably remove the ability to place down building structures within the safe zone. Now as you can see here we've put down a large storage box mainly for storing up loot and quest items. Unfortunately what this ends up doing is disincentivizing the player to go out and explore too far away from the safe zone. 
mainly because they can just keep everything here and never be attacked from zombies. Removing this, however, would give players more of an incentive to go out and explore the world, maybe make a big base that's more centralized in the map, as well as putting down a number of locations with some respawn points. But at the end of the day, with all said and done, that is going to do it for us here today. Thank you so much for stopping out. I greatly appreciate you. Hopefully you've enjoyed the content and you'll take the opportunity to go and check out the game on Steam. Give it a follow as well as checking out the Discord. They are looking for suggestions from players just like you and there's a demo coming up very soon for you to try out for yourself. Hopefully you'll take the opportunity to do so. But would I suggest the game? Absolutely. Especially with the free demo in mind. And I'd probably give it a rating around a 6 or a 7, only because of the bugs and the early access state. I'm sure a lot of these things are going to change, and I would gladly take the opportunity to come back and see how the game has progressed in the future. So before you go, make sure that you get down in the description, check out all the media links, likes, follows, subs, all that fun stuff, and then take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. Stay healthy out there. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.